when removing the paper from the water, hold it up and drain as much water from the corners as possible. To the right of the tub is an area where the excess water is rolled off of the paper onto muslin cloth. I use an ordinary rolling pin that you would buy in a kitchen store. The muslin dries quickly on its own, but you could use a hair dryer if you're making a lot of prints at one time. Here we have two layers of muslin, which is really one sheet folded over. And then put on top of the paper is the same thing and usually after rolling it flip the top one completely over notice it's it doesn't reach the floor now we're going to put the damp paper over the plate using the registration marks that we made earlier Then we're going to flip the felts over the paper. I use three layers of polypropylene felt, one eighth of an inch thick. Then we roll over the paper and plate. You can feel when you come to the plate. Then you'll feel again when you drop off of the plate. And be sure to go to the very end of the paper. And then we roll back to the starting position. We flip off the felt, and there you can see that the plate is actually embossed into the paper. This causes stress in the paper, which sometimes makes it crinkle when it is drying. To prevent curling or crinkling of the paper as it dries, I use pieces of wood to actually hold the edges of the paper in straight lines. These pieces of wood are made from MDF, which is medium density fiberboard. And you can buy two foot by four foot pieces at any lumber store and then cut off strips to the width you want. The dowel rod is to prevent the print from sagging in the middle as it dries. We're going to place the print over these pieces of wood and then add another layer of wood. The gaps in the corners of the four pieces of wood allow air to move and the moisture to escape.
Now, if I was doing multiple prints, I would just keep going up in the stack as I did with this one sheet here. Now I'm placing the plate here next to the print to show you that the print is a mirror image of the plate. Note the position of the ghost on the plate and the print. Okay, it's time to clean our plate. It's just a matter, really, of running water over it and wiping it with a towel. Sometimes I forget and leave the plate on the press and find it a week later. It's, that's really no problem. I just soak it in a sink full of water for about 10 minutes and then clean it in the same manner. That's pretty much all there is to it. The marks on the plastic sheet uh, were made by a standard Sharpie and they can be easily removed with various solvents that you can get any place where they sell paint. Uh, Gum spirits of turpentine, also known as paint thinner, or mineral spirits, acetone, which is the same as nail polish remover, and MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, is also available at paint stores. I'll just arbitrarily use the methyl ethyl ketone. Just wet a paper towel a little bit, and it's gone. Okay, it's time to take a look at our print. It's been drying for 24 hours. And there it is. You can see how the plate embossed the paper. That's a sure sign of a true Intaglio print. This print is called The uh, Ghost of Moonville Tunnel in the Hawking Hills area of Ohio. There's an abandoned railroad tunnel. There was a train crash there years ago and an engineer was killed. There's a legend that he walks the Moonville Tunnel at night.